Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Flasher Club, where there is no measure to entertainment and terror. Welcome, because tonight we will be doing a very special series to take to take a break from M Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We will be doing Child's Play from 1988. The first of the series. And we will continue to do this series up until the third movie, where we will go back to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. And Derek will be giving you the synopsis in three, two, one, now. For this movie, the synopsis is a six-year-old boy wants a good guy doll for his birthday. His mother finds a, finds a doll from some guy in the dark alley from her work. Unknowns to her, it came from a toy store that recently got destroyed and is now being possessed by a criminal who put his soul into the doll right before he got killed. And now this doll is terrorizing the family and leading people to believe that the little boy has gone insane. Right. Now on to the facts. Tonight, we have director Tom Holland from Fright Night, which came out three years before. <coughs> we have direct producer David Kuchner, screenplay by Don Maccioni, John Lafia, and Tom Holland. We have story by Don Maccioni, music by Joe Renzetti, cinematography by Bill Butler. We have the Brewster Apartments at Diversity and Pine Grove, Chicago, Illinois, also known as the Barclay Residence. And then we have Culver Studios, Culver City. California, which is most of the film, except for the Chinese restaurant that was made for the toy store, which you can actually hear the exact location on the movie as the cop is mentioning it. <coughs> Characters. We have Alex Vincent as Andy Barkley. <coughs> Catherine Hicks as Karen Barkley. Chris Sarandon, who was also on the famed Fright Night. As Detective Mike Norris, we have Brad Dorf, our beloved Chucky and Charles Lee Ray, who also played T Officer Brackett in the reboot of Halloween. Amazing actor. We have Diane Manoff as Maggie Peters, and Tom Swardlow as Jack Santos, Jack Colvin as Dr. Ardmore, Raymond Oliver as John Dr. De Bishop, Neil Gitoli as Eddie Caputo, <clears throat> Alan Wider as Mr. Walter Criswold, the douchebag of a boss, to Karen and... Maggie, we have Aaron Osborne as the orderly, Juan Ramirez as the peddler, and on to the gore score. In this movie, I counted a total of five deaths, one including Chucky himself. The first death is Maggie falling to her death out of the kitchen window. The second is Eddie being blown to smithereens after hilariously shooting into the gas from the oven. We have John getting killed by his own voodoo magic by Chucky. We have the psych doctor getting a little bit of his shock therapy. And Chucky being burned to death and eventually being shot in the heart by the detective. Right. On to the favorite girl. Which, for me, would have to be 
Honestly, I couldn't choose between these two, so I did two. Maggie gets hammered and falls eight floors. And Dr. Philip gets electrocuted. Now, reason why I like Maggie gets knocked out eight floors is honestly amazing slow motion as she's falling. And this is the mo this is the kill that starts it all off. And huge suspenseful moments. As she knocks over the sugar jar, and as we slowly see her fall from the window after getting hit by a hammer, and then the ending, what happens after, trying to just figure out who did it. And then, on to Dr. Phil. Huh. <laughs> Where, honestly, I have to say... Amazing special effects, especially as we want. I mean, this is the kill that we get to see everything happen. No punches are pulled. Nothing to block out any of it. We watch the terror on... Um, we see the terror on Andy's face as he's watching the doctor get burned to a crisp through his head by an electric shock. And we watch all the blood just slip out of his head and out of his mouth. And then we watch his skin turn crispy. What about you? <clears throat> My favorite kill has to be John getting destroyed by his own voodoo doll. I find it to be the most creative of all the kills, considering it's got a little to do with magic. And Chucky just torturing a man to get the information that he needs in order to not get stuck in a doll for the rest of his life. <laughs> Funny you mention that, because on to the least favorite kills. For me, <laughs> John dies by voodoo. I am sorry I had to put this as my least favorite, because yeah, we've got the build-up of Chucky asking him what he's gonna do. He breaks his leg with the doll, he breaks his arm with the doll, but... It just goes to nothing when he just stabs the doll, and you watch John slowly bleed out, and... I don't know, they could have done a whole lot more, like throw the doll out the window, and it smashes on the ground, so John's ribs completely break and kill him by puncturing his heart, or a little more than just the knife stabbing him in the heart through a voodoo doll. It could have been a whole lot better. What about you? I mean, if all these deaths were good and creative, but if I had to say, I think Maggie's fall to her death had to be my least favorite, just because I have seen many characters of many movies fall to their death and some even having slow motion. I mean, I guess, but this was kind of one of the first ones to do that, other than Halloween. But... I know, but being that I, it's not the first that I've seen, it seemed a little too cliche for me. I can see your point. Um, on to the last of the facts. It's the only film in the series that was Produced or distributed by Metro Gold Myers because they ended up going bankrupt later on, so it was sold to Universal. It had a budget of nine million, a box office of forty-four point two million, so it made. Yeah. <laughs> um. Shot. We have the doll was actually modeled after the Cabbage Patch Kids and My Buddy Dolls of the 1980s. Which you can kind of see because, well, for the My Buddy Dolls, they had the overalls, they had the striped shirt. And they basically talked similar to Chucky. Where the Cabbage Patch Kids, they're just the creepiest fucking dolls of the 80s, if you look at all of them. 
I remember them being sold back in the early 2000s. Yeah, that's when they came back. Um, Chucky's full name derived from Charles Manson, Lee Harvey Oswald, and James Earl Ray. That is famous killer Charles Manson. We have Lee Harvey Oswald, who is known for killing John F. Kennedy. And James Earl Ray, who killed Martin Luther King. Um, Maggie was originally supposed to die the exact way Tiffany dies in Bride of Chucky, so imagine this. Instead of her falling out of the wa window, Maggie was supposed to be electrocuted while taking a bath while watching Andy as his mother is at work. I mean, would have been more interesting having that as Maggie's death, but I think they did a better job waiting to give us that in, like, fuck, um, the fourth movie. Um, there's a, lot, there's a lot of things they did well in this entire franchise, but I'm gonna save that for future reviews. <laughs> um, original titles included, batteries not included, which... Obviously, we all know the reason why they didn't go with that one was because during the same year, Spielberg was doing an exact movie with that exact title. So they moved on to Blood Buddy, which basically the whole story was supposed to be similar to Pinocchio's Revenge, where Andy gets cut, he gains the doll... His blood mixes with the odd uh, artificial organs made for the doll, and basically think of it as Pinocchio comes alive if Geppetto cut himself, and then he ends up killing all his enemies or people he doesn't like. So yeah, basically Pinocchio's Revenge, which thank God they didn't go with that because... Pinocchio's Revenge is such a fucking terrible movie, and this just did so well. So, they went into Child's Play. Um, Chucky's original name was actually supposed to be Buddy. Yeah. Oh, look out! It's Buddy, the killer doll! It just sounds like a funny-ass TV cartoon compared to Chucky, the killer doll. Funny thing is, this actually wasn't the first Chucky movie I watched. I first found out about Chucky through, um, fuck, Bride of Chucky, which is I a lot of... Go on. I first, I first found out about him through Seed of Chucky. <laughs> which, funny thing is, Bride is a lot of other YouTubers' favorite horror movie in this series, where the one you first saw was actually their... The one they call, basically, Trash Chucky. Um, to the almighty de- This is actually the translation to what Chucky's saying as he's performing voodoo on the doll. To the almighty Dambala, give me the power, I beg of you. To the mercy of my soul, to the point of my death, hear me out of my condemned voice. Or so we think. It's kind of hard to translate since it's Creole-Haitian instead of French, so not many people know the language of the Haitians. And that's it for the facts. Um, I'll let you go first with the opinion. Just about everything perfect. The villain in the movie, the deaths were creative, the story was well paced and on point, the plot itself was pretty well, pretty well thought out. Overall, 
it was, it was just a great movie. I'd have to give it a 10 out of 10. Uh, Alright. Um, I guess it's my turn. Honestly, I'd have to agree, but there was a few things they were kind of missing. I mean, there were a whole lot of plot holes, like, how the fuck does Carrie not notice that the box literally says, Battery, batteries included in big red letters, and how does she not notice that until, like, close to the end of the movie? I mean, I get it's supposed to make the movie move on, not focusing on these plot points, but I find that just... It's the first thing you'd find on a box. How do you not notice it? Um, also... I have to say my favorite scene is... Ugh, ugly doll. Fuck you! <laughs> Just every time I watch this movie, I'm waiting to see that part. I mean, it's just so fucking funny. <laughs> I watched it with my brother, and he re reminded it like three or four times just because it was so funny. <laughs> Same. Um, there is one part close to the end where I actually had to turn on the censored or subtitles so I could figure out what the hell Chucky was saying. It was... Right when um, Andy comes out with the bat, he looks around the corner, and Chucky runs at him. I, I, for some reason, I thought it was, Some better! Turns out it was, Surprise! Wesley figured that out in an instant. I asked, all I heard was, Hey, surprise! <laughs> and I'm asking, what the hell was he saying? And I, Wes goes and says... He said, ha, surprise. Yeah, I'm wondering, actually, you know what? It was him screaming or shouting, and then he goes, surprise. And I'm wondering, what the fuck did he just say? So I had to rewind it, like, three times. First two without the subtitles. Then I decided, screw it, subtitles. And I, could, I can't even hear it in there, him saying surprise, until you see the subtitles. Um, then... Uh, one there. of my favorite scenes was when Chucky was breaking through one of the doors, and all you can hear him say was, Give me the boy and I'll let you live. Just give me the boy. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. But, you know what? A lot of people are afraid of Chucky, but I have to say, the only reincarnation I'd love of Chucky that actually scares the shit out of me or I'd be afraid to see coming at me burnt up Chucky after he was fucking, like, right when Andy's looking up at him as he's holding the knife and you just see the whole charred body after he's been burned. It's just, what the fuck is that? And the scene that came before that, when Chucky said, we're friends till the end, remember? I mean, My that is very funny. That movie, Andy says, this is the end, friend. Actually, the funny thing is, wh right, if you notice, there was kind of some foreshadowing in that scene where he's decide, where, um, Karen's threatening him, saying, Talk, you, talk, fucker, or I'll put you in the fire. Or, it's kind of some foreshadowing. That he's going to get burned somehow in this movie. And actually, there's one thing that not even I can notice, but it's actually implied on the trivia that, um, Mick was actually supposed to hit Chucky over the head so and knock his head off with the bat. And somewhere in that scene, as Chucky's having his head shot off, there's supposed to be a shadow of a bat, and of Mick holding the bat, knocking the head off. But for some reason, I can't even see it in the movie. Me neither. I didn't even know that was supposed to happen. Yeah, that was actually a deleted scene, but... Funny thing is, you look for the deleted scenes on the video, 
they deleted them all. They completely got rid of them all and left everything else in. So it kind of sucks that you can't see actually, what would have happened. I actually have a full DVD collection that has deleted scenes and bonus clips in it. So do I. I have the Blu-ray. But... God, I can't hate this movie. It's not as bad as Seed. It's... Not so bad as three. It's honestly really good, and it was an amazing start to an amazing series. I... I mean, yeah, it does have its flaws. It does have its... Um... Clichés that you'd see in every movie. I mean, it was the start of the Killer Doll series. If you don't count, um... Night of the Night of the Living Doll, which is basically Talkie Tina from um, Twilight Zone, but this is the honest to God first serial killing doll that we've ever gotten, and it was a huge, huge improvement to most killers. It was the one thing we haven't gotten. And it brought us into movies like Puppet Master, um, honestly, I think Puppet Master is the only one that came after it. If I'm wrong, you guys can tell me in the comments, but, yeah, I kind of agree, it deserves a, you know what, screw it, 9.5. I'm sorry, the flaws are just so heavy, I'd have to put it at 9.5. And you're, you're gonna have to see why in like, in like, May, when we, when we do like, Chucky 4, 5, 6, 7. You're waiting till May for that? Or are you talking about March? Wait, March, I mean March. Right after we finish the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies, but. Oh boy. I guess that's it, um. Don't forget wait, to like. Wait, one thing I'd like to add to this. My absolute favorite moments in this movie is when every time Chucky gets shot, all you see is the doll flying in the air. Especially when he gets shot in the leg, you think, what the hell is giving this doll trajectory? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what? We're not done. That is the part I want to mention the most. I mean, I'm wondering, um... A pistol isn't supp a shotgun. I'd understand if it was a shotgun, uh, double barrel, but these are Smith and Wesson shot Smith and Wesson pistols, and they're giving this doll a huge trajectory, just shooting it into the wall like he's being shot with a shotgun. What the hell? I just found it hilarious, especially when he yelled. I kind of just find it stupid looking at it. I mean, it could never happen. And a lot of these movies are supposed to be built on, um, I guess some realism. But, again, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that little notification bell on the bottom next to the subscribe button, and check out our review of Black Christmas on Friday, and our next week's review of Child's Play 2. Any final words, Derek? Be good to your toys. Because they're always watching. And they see everything. So play nice. Good night, goodbye, and... Good night, Chucky.